Hi, Peter. How's it going? I have a question. Do you have a new beer for me? Of course. Thank you for the beer, but I have some other questions. Happy to help. Let's go. All right. So, Peter, here's a Yeti frame, the SB 5.5. Please tell me why it's so special to have the Infinity Link. Yeah, you know, uh, so our bike, our suspension design is a, it's really a, it's a four bar linkage design, but what makes it really unique are a couple features. Um, the first thing is one of our links is a, a basically a linear, linear mechanism. So um, this bottom link, the switch infinity link, we call it here, actually translates or moves in a linear path. And what that allows us to do is some really unique things kinematically. By that, I mean we're able to control features of the bike. Um, for instance, we can really finely tune our, and control our anti-squat properties that we're after, our leverage ratio and some other nerdy things that we care about. Um, and we can do that in a way um, that's really difficult or I guess more finely tuned than we can do with just using um, our QIC links or a nonlinear link. The other thing that makes it unique in how it's controlling everything, as you go through the motion here, if you, if you pull up on that axle okay. and you watch the, the body here, or the body sliding on this rail, as you go through the travel initially, the body is moving vertically. Later in the travel, it'll actually um, have an inflection point where then it starts to move downward. So we want to make sure that we have a nano squat property or a pedaling platform that's very stable where you're pedaling, um, and that's around the sag point. And what's really unique there is that <clears throat> it's not just right at 30% sag that we care about. Okay. We care about being stable in a band or a, a, a you know an amount of travel that's before and after sag in a, in a window there. And if we only cared about right at sag, we're not going to be as efficient as we can be because when you're riding a bike and you're riding at sag, you're not just at 30% sag all the time. You're hitting small bumps. You're moving your body position. So we care that the anti squat is very flat or very stable. And so a lot of other linkage designs typically will hit a nano squat property that they're looking for around SAG, but usually it's maybe only right at 30% or it's, it's a quick instance that it's stable. Um, and that's what's, what's unique about um, Switch Infinity. Yeah, if you go through the travel and you watch the body of the Switch Infinity move up and then move down, um, I mentioned earlier that's, that's relative to what we're doing with uh, anti squat properties. Um, as you go through the travel and it's first moving up, that's really what's representing um, the pedaling platform and why the bike is, is staying stable um, when you're pedaling and being really efficient. And then later in the travel, as you get past sag and, and past the inflection point, the body starts to then move downward. Um, and that really helps us actually get rid of that pedaling platform. And uh, something that we want to do is decouple that pedaling platform later in the travel where we don't actually need it. Um, and what that does is allows us to have really efficient travel, um, travel that we're using um, as opposed to fighting with, with chain tension later in the travel. And it's called Switch Infinity because it's never end and goes up and down? Or uh, You know, uh, Infinity is, a, yeah, I guess you can go in a couple ways, but if you think of a linear motion, you can think of a link that's infinitely long. Um, as the shorter the link, the more, the tighter the radius of the curvature of how that link is going to rotate. The longer that link is eventually you get to infinity and you try to make a link move, the path that that link takes is then eventually linear. Um, it also is sort of a play on words in that we are infinitely able to adjust the suspension on, on how we'd like to. Okay. And uh, now let's see a complete bike and uh, move over to the SP5. Sounds great. Now we are in front of the SP5. In my opinion, the best bike for everybody. What do you think? You know, I, I agree. I think it's uh, for us, it's been one of our best selling bikes, and I think that's for a, a few reasons. Um, one, it's a really good balance. Uh, you know, it's, there's five inches of travel, um, 140 millimeters of travel, and that seems to be a really sweet spot in terms of, you know, it's not too much and it's not too little. It works for a lot of people's terrain and riding style. Um, at the same time, you know, the geometry is in a way where it's, it's also very balanced and not too aggressive, um, but it's still classic Yeti geometry where it's it's longer, um, you know, it's, it's slack, it's going to keep you stable when you're descending. Um, and then both of those things tied together with the suspension, um, really what's, what, what puts it together. So those things, three things working together is what's keeping that bike um, working really well for the majority of people. This year you have a new version of it, the SP5 LR. Um, that's the bike we could see uh, over here. Um, what is uh, the LR for? Yeah, the uh, LR stands for Lunch Ride, and it's 
At Yeti, we actually close um, every day during the week for lunch, uh, 11.30 to 1, and everybody packs up and we ride our local trails right out the door. Typical Colorado trails, they're, they're steep, they're really rocky um, and technical, and so uh, basically what we were finding is that a lot of us were building up the bike in this manner. So uh, what we wanted to do is, is, is give to the, offer to the public the exact bike that, or the way that we're typically setting up our bike at work for that ride. So, in your opinion, the best bike ever? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I mean, it, the, the five is really it, for our train, and I, I think a lot of people's train. It's it's just such a, a great bike um, in terms of balance, like I mentioned before. And if you look at riders like Richie Rude and, and, our, and our race team that are often switching between a um, SB5 and SB6. Um, it really gives credit to that bike, and, and I think um, most people at first are like, oh, I can't believe you know, he would choose, Richie would choose that bike for, for like an EWS, and until you ride the bike and you realize that it, it really feels and it seems like more travel than, than is actually is stated, and you can really, you know, ride this bike to in terrain that you, you wouldn't think would be capable of. In one sentence, a damn good bike. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Alright, here we go, let's see. We're out there. I think it's close. <laughs> you got me beat by like three inches. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.